at this point in the course if you had followed along the videos in a sequence and have successfully solved all the mini challenges you should be pretty comfortable with vectors now we are about to move on to the next important topic in this course and that would be data frame so what is a data frame when we learned about vectors we saw that a vector is a collection of similar items that are put together in one single object now imagine if these items that are there in the vector have multiple properties and we want to collect similar vectors for those items and we want to combine them in one single object itself in that case one vector won't be sufficient but a collection of vectors of the same size that represent these properties would be of great help let me illustrate the example of an excel spreadsheet let me open up excel imagine this spreadsheet in the first column we have persons and second column will have the age height salary and in the first column i will have my persons i'll call them person 1 person 2 so on i have filled up with this rows with artificial values in this case we have four columns and five rows the first row would be a header so in these four columns we can think of them individually as individual vectors itself but when we put together all these vectors it would form what is called a data frame let's head back to r and see how this is done i have created here a set of five different vectors let me run all those so all these vectors are numeric vectors and a b c d and e all of them have all these content and there are missing values in a b c d vectors now i am going to combine these vectors to form a data frame the syntax to do that would be data dot frame put my vectors inside this so now df would have all these vectors put together side by side and the class of df would be data frame data frames come with a number of helper functions let's look at them one by one so the first one would be to find the number of rows in df the function would be end row and df has five rows as you can see here and number of columns would be n call if we want to stack the columns of df on top of each other there is a function called stack df1 will now contain all the values of df put on top of each other and a new variable called ind is created and that represents what is the corresponding column for each row so that's how stack works let's now see r bind what r bind will do is r bind stands for row bind what it does is it just appends the arguments we provide to it in rows that is the arguments will be vectors or data frames we will pass the argument as data frame here we will append say 3 df together and we will call it rdf because it's r binded now rdf will contain df repeated 3 times it is appended row wise similar to r bind there is also a function called c bind you can guess what it will do let me call it cdf the c bind stands for column bind instead of appending it row wise it will append it column wise right let's check the class of these both are data frames now let's move on to the next one that's a function called head head what it throws out is so we have provided it rdf rdf is this one with 15 rows out of the 15 rows head throws out the first 6 rows suppose if we want to see the first 3 rows from head we can add it as the second argument for head and running this we will get only the first three rows similar to head we have a function called tail that will throw us the last six rows and adding the second argument say i will ask for the last four rows and it gives out the same earlier we checked the class of the whole object itself using this class function what this gives out is the class of that specific object what if we want to check the class of individual columns within rdf how would i do that there's a convenient facility for it in the form of str function str stands for structure and i want to find out the structure of rdf and it gives out an output like this in the first row it tells about the whole object itself 15 observations with five variables 15 observations stands for the 15 rows while five variables a variable will stand for each column so that's how it is named and we have a dollar notation here using that dollar notation i can bring up the respective columns from rdf itself and followed by that we have num here 
num stands for numeric it is shortened in the form of num and followed by a set of few values from each of these columns now one interesting thing about data frame is that we can have these rows to contain different classes of columns itself so that's a main advantage of having data frames and that is also the main difference between a data frame and a matrix the difference essentially is matrix if it contains a number all the elements within a matrix in all the columns across should also be numbers only but in data frames within one specific column you must have the same data type that is a vector cannot have different data types right but across columns we can have different data types we can have a numeric vector character vector factor all these combined together across columns in different columns so that's the main difference so that's about the structure of a data frame